Doc, let's go to question one. Mm -hmm. Even as Zam and yes, Danish sir. are mulling mm -hmm. over the other questions. Mm -hmm. And I really liked it because we always like say, yes, my dad didn't do this. Well, apart from the one who was sung for, hey. So, but you know, my dad should have, my mom should have, my mom, and you know, and you said we have to reparent our inner child. But I like how she flipped it. And she said, so how can we help them? So yes, they've carried this through all those many years and she still has that heart of, I would want even their latter years, how can we help them to also now start to uh, be whole or feel good about themselves? Mm -hmm. is, there, is there a way? Does that happen? Yes and no. Okay. Because when you're dealing with an adult, you can only suggest so much. And at time, we are having Generation Z uh, able to stand up and tell their parent, I can't do this anymore. If you don't want to do therapy, I have to move on with my life. And the parent feels it's selfishness. It is, but that might be the thing that will push your parent uh, to realize there's a problem and work towards healing. Uh, but you can only suggest. So uh, we've dealt with children of parents who have, for example, been using alcohol. And you find the relationship, you might find one of the parents was the enabler. And this child grows up having that model as a relationship. So when you're attracting an abusive man, you don't realize you're just doing what you saw at home. Yes. What you saw your mom going through is what you're attracting. So there's a lot of dynamics. Um, that uh, modeling is very key, that whatever you see, if you don't heal, you're likely to repeat the same. And the role of the father is as important as the role of the mother. Because you see, you're setting an example to who your daughter will be looking up to. So if a, a, a daughter grows up thinking it is okay for a man to beat his wife, then they will accept the same from their spouse. Yeah. Um, so all in all, um, the young generation is aware of their mental health needs, is aware of things going all wrong at home. You can suggest to your parents, I think you need therapy, this and this is not going on well. And for the parents also, we're having parents of my generation who are enmeshed with their children. So then don't realize that my son, my daughter is now an adult. I need to find a job for myself. I'm no longer, I cannot continue parenting a 25 year old. A that year old. So you have parents who are, had only two children and their children have moved out and they think that is still their business. Instead of finding things to do, they continue and meshing, wanting their children to leave their story and you end up worsening the relationship. So those are things you need to be keen to and as an adult you can only push them to do this much. You need to realize you cannot save the world. So you only suggest and if you cannot then you draw, draw boundaries. This is what I will take, this I can't take. You might be putting so much focus on trying to fix your parent that in the process you forfeit your own goals, your own dreams. Yes, and when yes. you're not okay, you're all just going to transfer that back to them. So what I now say is that the primary responsibility I have is to my mental health, yes. to my well-being, to yes. my progress. Yes. Then when I have grown and I'm great and successful, then out of the shade of this big mugumo or ngau tree, yes. birds can find shade. Mm, exactly. But if you're like this small tree that you're trying to grow, but the sun in a kuchapa, mm, uku, character yeah, development, yeah. you never grow, you yes, never yes, offer shade yes, to anybody, yes, you know. Yes, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the primary focus is on to you. So for me, I made a very serious decision about, so my dad used to really tell me this, which before sounded very nice to my ears. You know, you're the light of this family. I said, uh, no, no, I'm not I the light. Like. You are the light because this is, these are your children, this is your home. This is your family. Have a home. So he stopped telling me that. So, you know, that is being, we're saying you're being fattened before the slaughter. So yes, yes, yes. then what comes on is more responsibility on you, you know. Yes, yes. So, my mother also always is, she's the one who calls me, so have you visited your siblings? Because she knows I'm the one who visits them. Yes, yes. I said, ah, okay, so you guys are delegating your responsibilities on me. Yes, yeah. While my siblings are moving on me, here, I'm stuck. Yeah, so yeah. now, me, I'm, I'm putting myself first. If yes, I don't yes. have the money to give, I just say I don't have. Yes, and yeah. I, without batting an eyelid. Yes, yes. Right oh. now, I'm focusing on my financial wellness, on my mental health, yes, on my yeah. family, on my boundaries, on the things I want. Yes, when yeah. I'm okay, then maybe that's the way, because I was very attached to my family and I really saw myself as the hero 
you know, we're the ones who, yes, yeah. I was the first one to go to the university, um, first one to break many of these barriers, to go abroad, all yes, these things. Yeah. So, you know, everyone kept on telling me, you know, you're the one who lift us. I said, ah, no, Jesus will lift you. <laughs> <laughs> Amen wow. to that. And wow. Wow. To, me. Yes, what to say, <laughs> to touch on what he has said, it's so powerful because my father died when I was 17. Three months before he died, he gave me the family mantle. I was the second, I'm the second born. Skipped my mother, skipped my first born sister, gave it to me. When I look back, it's not something to brag about. Before I went through a healing journey, I thought, oh, my father really loved me. You know, like, wow, I'm the hero here. Hell no, I was a parentified child. You understand? And those are the things that really took a toll on my he mental health. So I was under so much pressure. I am the family savior. I am the family hero. I had to work m like a donkey. I had to take myself through school. I had to work, toil. I was a workaholic. I took my siblings through schooling. I was like, even my mother was not taking any responsibility. I was the de facto mother and father in that home, paying all the bills, doing everything. Then years back, you look back, you're like, where is the appreciation? None whatsoever. You have a wake up call. Your responsibility is to yourself. Now I'm focusing on, and even to detach from this kind of dysfunctional family enmeshment, there will be a lot of uh, backlash. You have to be very strict in terms of your boundaries. I tell people right now, boundaries, boundary, boundaries. When I'm talking about trauma and healing, boundary is so important, uh, setting boundaries. Yeah. Boundaries, emotional, financial, spiritual. You understand there are different types of boundaries. And right now I've had to detach, slowly exit from obligations, I sat down and wrote, like, how much money am I paying to these obligations? I was paying so much money to a point even I'm not able to pay things for my daughter to a point where I'm raising entitled brats. You understand? Mm. So I had to detach. There was a lot of backlash, <laughs> a lot of fights, which were even affecting my mental health. Two type instances, I was almost suicidal because of now the fights got so nasty. And then I had an aha moment. I'm like... One of the key factors that are affecting my mental health is family dysfunction. So I went back, I was like, I was a scapegoated child in a dysfunctional family. And I've had to, as part of these roles that we grew up with, the savior, the golden child, golden the scape child, child, you have to detach from those roles. Yeah. Uh, part of healing also, I had to kind of like go no contact with my mother because I realized we were enmeshed. And I had to kind of like detach grow no contact for some time, set strong boundaries. She wants a relationship with me. I told her it will happen organically. I don't want it rushed because it's 23 or almost now. I'm 40 years, 40 years of trauma. You understand? The relationship is not going to be built overnight. I cannot save my mother's... Uh, one of the things with the mother wound, daddy wound, you cannot save your parents. You cannot rescue them. They have to decide, like what the doctor has said, to either go through healing to heal. If they do not want, you'll have to accept this is a done story.